Daddy! Daddy! Is that my daughter calling from the other room in her crib? Oh no, guilty movie pleasure fans. That's Victor Crowley, because he lives, and today we're covering Hatchet! Welcome to Popcorn Talk, featuring movie discussion, news, and interviews. Popcorn Talk. We talk movies. And now, here's Popcorn Talk's Guilty Movie Pleasure. Oh yeah, Guilty Movie Pleasure fans. I don't know why I'm coming in here like it's a WWE this is, wrestling this is a show. Wrestling event. <laughs> like, I love how surprised you were like, oh, oh, we're not oh. doing Oh, this is oh, new. We're doing something new. We did not talk about this. Hey right. everybody, welcome to Guilty Movie Pleasures. If it's your first time listening, thank you. That's really kind of you. If it's we your appreciate you so much. If it's your hundredth and twelfth time listening, then hey. Thanks for sticking around. We appreciate that even more. I'm Ben Begley, your host for the day and for every week for the foreseeable future. And with me, as always, <laughs> Jesse McIntosh. And I'm very confused right now for a number of reasons. Um, we cut the we cut the shake weight dance short. We, we did. We did. Uh, I just like to throw. I, my goal was to opening. throw you for a loop. Well, you did it. I'm in a loop right now. Um, I, you, also, you know, I also want a special shout yeah, out to please. the people who have listened in between 0 and 112 yeah, times. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to think that I don't want to think any we're excluding you. I don't want you to have to count how many times you've listened no, you, in order no. to feel appreciated. Absolutely you guys not. are all appreciated. You, we appreciate it. Even if you listen to five minutes of this yep. and then give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down. You know, The only people we don't appreciate yep. are those that give us a thumbs down before even listening. At least listen to two minutes. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. And the people who, when we say, we know this isn't a guilty movie pleasure, comment, that's not a guilty movie pleasure. I don't it's appreciate like, those God people. damn it. I say that in the first five I minutes to make sure. Those people. Uh, I know what happened to the intro. What happened? It's the combo of the Jones soda, the sugary latte, and the cake that I had before this that we told, we, we, Jesse and I, I don't know if you know this, but we're friends in real life. We're real life friends. And we met up for coffee before this to talk life stuff. And, uh, and, uh, and boy, did we. Boy, did we. Yeah. And, we uh, don't have to go through the we whole don't have combo. To, no, we'll, go, we'll talk about Hatchet. But uh, there was the big joke about how um, I may either have a sugar high or a sugar crash during the show. It's going to be exciting to monitor. It's gonna, and I'm not yeah. sure which one it's going to be. You I've, might experience both. I've never done cocaine, but I feel like uh, I feel my body jittering right now. Okay, so sugar. this is we're approximating cocaine yep. at this point. Yep. It was a, so you say cake. It was... Sold to you as a cheesecake, it was, and it was not. And it was not. It was a cement block of caramel. <laughs> it was a cement. I think is the best way to yeah. put it. I, I don't know why I was with my hand on my hip like this right now. I don't know. You're very um, proper. It yeah. actually looks better on camera than it feels in real life. That's what sugar does to you. Man. Uh, that's what sugar just makes you pose weird. You so, anyways, we're talking the Adam Green classic, uh, new wave slasher film Hatchet. It came out in I don't even remember now, 2007, and I remember hearing some murmurs about this. They did like a screening at ArcLight. And it, all these horror fans, Arclight were, Cinemas, yeah, at nice. Arclight Cinemas, and they were doing all these, all these horror fans were like, Hatchet, it's crazy, it's an homage to 80s slasher films, but a comedic take on it. And I was like, I got to check this out, and I missed it in theaters, and I, and I ended up buying it on DVD, and I loved it. Clearly, I loved it because I own Hatchet Two, and I also own Hatchet Three on Blu-ray, just to change things up. Well, just let's, change things let's up. Let's be clear, you're proving that you own the boxes. We don't know if anything's in those boxes. You may have actually there is. Purchased well, there the box. is, but Hatchet Two is in my DVD player currently because I was in the middle of rewatching it before coming here. But I actually I like all three of them. I think Hatchet One's still the best. Hatchet Three is almost on par with it for me um, because it has a little bit bigger budget and the gore is crazier. And Danielle Harris takes over the part of the lead, and I love Danielle Harris. She's from Halloween Four and Five back in the day. She played Michael Myers' cousin. And um, I think she's awesome. She has great emotional range, and I really dig her as an actress, as a scream queen. Mm. I don't necessarily rewatching it. It's funny. So when I watch this, uh, oh, okay. So just allegations. And we were also we were also gonna say how it's weird now, how Harry Knowles in it cool news was on everything, and now it will be removed from everything because of the sexual misconduct misconduct allegations. Uh, Nothing proven yet, but um, I'm sure. It's only shortly to follow, which, you know what, I say, good. Sure. It's about time that these, let's be honest, it's about time that these creeps stop preying on young women and young men, too. And There's praying, both. When you say preying, I think that you, you mean P-R-E-Y, right? Yes, I don't mean that they're... You don't mean that they're praying. <laughs> Bless you, yeah. my, my child. I want to make no. sure we're clear. I'm yeah. glad. You know, as a, as a father who has a daughter uh, and, and uh, just thinking of a world where there's a few less creeps out there doing that shit, awesome because it, people in power have just gotten 
they're sociopaths. They think they can get away with anything. Yeah. And so we're not going to get into a whole political rant or whatever, but I think everybody pretty much agrees that if you're a sexual predator, you should be fired and go to safe, jail. Safe to assume. Safe to assume. I mean, it's unless you're a horrible human. You know, it's hard to assume anything anymore, but I feel like... <laughs> I think we can I all agree like on that. we're on the same page with sexual predators should not be allowed yeah. to exist in society. I, I think it's great. I think it's great that this that Harvey Weinstein's being outed. It's like, clearly, you look at that guy, he looks like a creep for years. Yeah. I'm glad. Good. Good riddance. Fuck off. You're a terrible person. Anyways, now now that we're done with um, condemning sexual predators, which was an odd U-turn, uh, yeah, an odd, you know, left turn. Sure. That but, was, um, can I, so this might be the sugar, but you said left turn the... and then indicated right turn. <laughs> well, I started so with U-turn I, first. You started, it was, but you can't U-turn that way also. <laughs> That's not the way you U-turn. Okay. So anyways, what I'm, I saw, now back to Hatchet. Now oh that boy. I went on my left turn. For uh, <laughs> it's just a dad ranting me because I just am super protective of my daughter already 10 months in, and I'm like, I would oh, anyway, so uh, I just punch somebody so hard till their face falls off. I don't know what that means, that's but Victor I Crowley, very, very explicit. You, so, you meant what you said, Hatchet, guys. Yeah. This movie, when I first saw it, I remember being blown away by how ridiculous the gore was, and I saw it around 2000, I saw it right when it came out, so um, just before I met. It was either right around or just before I met Renee, my now wife. And so boobs were still kind of awesome. Not that they're not awesome now, but when you're a single yeah. dude or newly dating, you're like, hey. Between the lines, guys. You're like, hey, it's like Pokemon. You just, you, you got to catch them all. Yeah. And uh, so this had tons of boobs, tons of gore, which is ironic that I'm talking about tons of boobs after condemning yeah. <laughs> sexual predators. So now we can start talking about the boobs. <laughs> so, now that we've but, now that we've staked our claim on anti-sexual yeah, predation. It does seem very hypocritical. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> it is funny though because it's almost like, as much as there's uh, gratuitous nudity in this, it's like a spoof of gratuitous nudity because it goes so far that it's ridiculous. Uh, it's like it doesn't even make sense why they're getting naked. It's it's making fun of Girls Gone Wild. It's making fun of uh, um, horror films in general and how much they put sure. gratuitous nudity. Sure. And I remember this movie, just the gore, everything in this movie is turned up to 15. The gore, we were talking about before this, how it's like a Mortal Kombat fatality. Each one, when you think they're dead, there's one last oomph where it's like, arms ripped off, that would kill them, right? Nope, I gotta pick up the body and smash the head against the gravestone. So there's always an extra step I remember really loving it when I saw it. I still had a lot of fun watching it now. I found that um, towards like the second half, the character started to wear on me a little bit. Specifically the lead, I was just like, all right, you're crying and you have a sort of Southern accent. And then Misty and Jenna, who started off kind of funny and like making fun of Girls Gone Wild, eventually I was like, no one's that dumb. When Misty's like, what number's 911? And it's like, are you sure it's 911? It could be a different area code in the South. And it's like, oh God. Yeah. That's where I was like, okay, just uh, stop, stop. Because right. it started off kind of in the same vein as Piranha 3D with like Jerry O'Connell and stuff like that. And then kind of went a little, whoosh. yeah. The characters um, grinded the, on me a little. What was your so, take? I'm always interested in your take when I. Oh, I appreciate you saying that. When I Thank when you. I force you to watch these kind of movies. No, I was not. I did not feel forced into anything. Just to go along with the um, what we were talking about earlier. <laughs> Jesus. I, <laughs> all right, let me table that one. Um, I'm but, gonna table that joke. But uh, yeah, you know it. So it is what it is. Mm -hmm. I'll say that about this. Like, it's, I, I probably, I probably it's a won't. Movie. I, yeah, it, it for sure is a movie. It was a short movie. Yeah. Um, I'm going to retweet this real quick. I, Keep yeah, going. By all means. Um, I probably won't watch it again, but it's not because I didn't like it. I, I didn't love it, and I didn't like it. Like, there were parts of it that I appreciated. Where um, does this uh, fall on the scale of Machete to Slither? I think it's, I think it was a little bit above Machete. Um... And probably it probably right in between actually, okay. um, but yeah, sort of like you said, the characters were such um, stereotypes that they they didn't necessarily feel grounded in anything. Yeah, um, they were just sort of archetypes of like what you, you would expect you don't to be. Really in this care sort of movie. about it. It doesn't matter. Like none of them matter really. Yeah. Um, and when they died, the only person that I like actually sort of was bummed out when they died was his black friend. Yeah, because um, I thought he was funny. He was and, funny, um, and like. And I was like, oh, maybe they won't kill the token black guy in this. Right, and yeah. And now they do. Yeah. Um, but it sort of, like, it only sort of bummed me out because he really, he was the only one that didn't want to be there. Yeah. Um, and so the, that sort of irony was the only thing that gave him any, like, humanization yeah, in that yeah, scenario. Yeah. Um, 
And then what what I talked to you about earlier is like this movie is billed as Hatchet. And he killed the first person with a hatchet, I think, and that was I think it. So, yeah. And it was sort of like, okay, so he's super strong and or the people who live in New Orleans have very weak skin. <laughs> Or just, I, like maybe it's just people who travel there. I don't know. I was in New Orleans for my bachelor party, and I don't remember having like weakened skin. Yeah, did you the feel atmosphere like is not your, any different? Your there. joints were super pliable, or like, like at any moment your arms could be ripped from their <laughs> sockets and the skin torn off. So like it was it was either that or he was extremely strong, and like it doesn't matter either yeah. way. If you're gonna be called Hatchet, I feel like you should do most of your killing via hatchet, hatchet. wielding. Yeah. I agree um, with that. I agree it's severely lacking in hatchet kills. Yeah. I will say it's um, it's kills this time around. Because I've seen the other two, and they do some Show cr- off. They do some crazier stuff in these, because each one, they kind of amp up the gore even more. I was telling you, in the, the beginning of the second one, he rips a guy, he puts his hand through a guy's stomach and rips the intestines out as the guy runs off. Then he takes it and strangles the guy and pulls until the guy's head pops off and blood sprays everywhere. And that, to me, is just... <clears throat> One of the most insane kills I've ever seen in a slasher film. Can so. we get can we get science on this? Does it's, anyone does science know is an intestine strong enough to I mean, pop mach- someone's head off? I mean, Machete pulled an intestine and jumped out a window and flew to the second. So then the maybe, floor below, maybe, maybe, maybe. Is it rope strength? Is it rope strength? So, uh, so I'm gonna guess that that you're not gonna be seeing Hatchet two or three or Victor Crowley lives the the new one. I probably won't follow up. Or and, Victor Crowley. Yeah, what it's and the other thing, in which you sort of uh, again, like we talked about when we were ha- being life friends, um, you talked about how Hatchet Two sort of goes into more mythology on Victor Crowley, and that was another thing that was sort of missing from yeah. this one was like they gave a little bit of his backstory and they told like the father tried to rescue him from a burning building and kids picked on him and yeah. whatever, but like we didn't really ever get to know him and like even the mythology was introduced to us by a fraud like yeah in fact g- we have that sound clip yeah let's do it let's play that sound clip the uh, uh the b th- oh shit b2 now uh coming up you all see an old house with a bomb behind it that right there is a home of a real I famous Louisiana legend victor crowley hatchet mix. The legend is is that uh he was a deformed man whose own father went nuts and Whacked him in the face with a hatchet one night. Probably on account of he was uh, so uh, ugly or something. Uh, anyway, he died. <laughs> anyway, anyway, he died. He died. <laughs> That's the best. That character's, I forget his name. Oh, shit. What's his name? He's, I think he's really funny because he has a bunch of different reveals where, like, at first he's pretending he's this New Orleans kind of like crawdad type yeah. guy. And then he puts on a super thick Asian accent. Then he reveals even further that that's a fraud. And he's actually just like, uh, uh, he's from Detroit originally. Well, his when he goes into the super Asian accent, that's where when he when says, he he's, says from he's from Detroit, and then later he reveals that like he. We might as well play Detroit now too, because we're, we're right here. Let's play clip five just for the hell of it. Okay, okay, look, I'm gonna be honest. I just moved down here from Detroit. My brother who hooked me up with this touristy gig told me I could make a ton of dough, so I say try out. <laughs> He's fun. His character's awesome. And in fact, his character's so great. The second one, they actually bring his twin brother. They they full on City Slickers 2, Curly's Gold him. Where like, you remember City yeah. Slickers? Where Jack yeah. Palance had a twin brother? Yeah. He has a twin brother that has a goatee in the sequel. That's tremendous. It's fantastic. And Tony Todd has a much larger part in the sequel. Because Tony Todd's one of my favorite characters in this. He's the Candyman dude in the beginning with the weird diamond eye. Who's oh, like, oh yeah. Which let's get in the plot because then uh, let's get in the plot in under three minutes because then I just want to dive in because this movie's ridiculous and I have a I I love this movie. Uh, are we ready in the booth? Let's do this plot. Okay, so basically we start off with Robert England and his uh, hillbilly son. They're in the woods, they're then and they're in the swamp fishing and they're alligator hunting, I think is what they're doing. Yeah. And his son has to piss. And when he pisses, an alligator almost bites his dick off and then they go to shore and then he ends up getting his Robert England ends up getting killed and so does his son. And then we cut to New Orleans and it's just boobs in broad daylight, which I've been in New Orleans, heard boobs in broad daylight just all the time. It's really strange. And uh, this and Joel David Moore is like aka Ben is like, I don't wanna I don't wanna be around here. I just keep thinking about my ex girl 
girlfriend and Marcus is his only black friend is like hey come on man this is great we got boobs and booze let's do this and he's like I want to do this haunted swamp tour so he drags his friend begrudgingly over there they meet Tony Todd he's like we don't do swamp tours anymore and he sends him over to so his buddy they, yeah so his, they go to, they go to the yeah. only other place that does swamp tours the only other place yeah. that does swamp tours and uh, the one guy's there's uh, like 40 <laughs> yeah I know that's all you can do in New Orleans uh, the, the one guy is uh, shooting a girls gone wild video with which two girls no which makes no sense just right in the lobby of this place this guy comes out of the back he sells them bus tickets so he's like all right let's get on um the friend doesn't want to go he still doesn't want to go but they get on the bus and he starts hitting on this uh one of the girls gone wild girls until she um, itches her crotch and, and then and they insinuate like, she has crabs no thank you and so the main guy sits down next to this like sulky girl and she's like i don't want to talk to you and they get to the boat and it's sort of like a broke down boat there's jim and shannon the all oh, the very yeah. excited couple from the midwest yep. we're just here to look at stuff yep and then there's one guy in, an, in another boat trying to tell them no swamp's closed jack swamp's closed. cracker yeah swamp's <laughs> closed and they're like y'all oh, gonna die whatever yeah so they just go ahead and uh, he the guy starts giving them a tour and uh, yeah there's an alligator that attacks them and it bites off uh, it bites Jim's leg as he's trying to because they get they hit a rock and they get stranded and then Jim tries to get out the old guy and he gets his leg bit and then they all go to shore and then they're like oh shit we happen to crash right next to Victor Crowley's house Jim and Shannon get just murdered we'll get into that because it's crazy kills yep. they get murdered then uh, 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 Doug Shapiro gets killed then it's um, one of the good that I think it's Misty or Sh no it's Shannon I think next I don't know anyways they regroup <laughs> and then they all start getting picked off one by one and they reveal the legend that Victor Crowley was uh, born deformed and his dad was hiding him and then these kids bullied him and threw these firecrackers in and lit his house on fire and then the dad uh, hatcheted down the house to free him and he got him in the head and that that's what killed him and turned him into what he is so they decide oh we can hurt him we so let's go back and get him so that we can escape this force so they go back uh, they decide they're gonna throw gasoline on him and then set him on fire um, they and do then that. it magically starts raining and then it rains right when they do that and so you finish they it. Start running away. finish it and then he uh he gets the friend and he kills the friend and they they find Do the fence it. and they find the gate and they get out um and then they're uh heading back on the boat and uh they then he comes out of the water and he kills them both and then that's the end of the movie right oh does he kill them both i think so we finished with 14 seconds to go boom look at that boom hatchet 2 starts off with her poking his eye out as he's choking her. I assumed, actually, that she lived. And then Jack Cracker saves her, and then Jack Cracker's talking to her, and she reveals who she is, and he pulls a shotgun on her. He's like, get the fuck out of here, and it turns out that her uncle was one of the kids that lit Victor Crowley on fire. It was one of the kids that was the bullies that threw the firecrackers. Right, right, right. That's a cool reveal that should have maybe been in the first one. Should have been in the first one. I, I, I'm glad that they explore that in the second one, but that needed to be in the first one. In case a second one never happened. So that and also the mythology of Victor Crowley should have been more fully hashed out. This Which, was a one hour, 25 minute movie. You could have had 20 They had more, yeah. 10 minutes yeah. to do both of those things. Because in the sequel, what they reveal also that I just, I just watched the first half hour of it. They reveal in a very lengthy flashback that Victor Crowley's mother was dying of stomach cancer. And the father fell in love with the, um, his African-American um, housemate or nurse that was her nurse. And they fell in love and they ended up having sex and, and Victor Crowley was, she was pregnant when the mom died and the mom curses her womb with their, her unborn child. Victor Crowley's born that way and then his, his real biological mom dies upon seeing him and Thomas Crowley, his dad, is then hiding him and hiding his shame. He's not hiding his son because he's disfigured, he's hiding his shame that he is the reason his wife cursed him and, and all this stuff. And then the hatchet of the face is still true and i guess he's called his he just goes by victor crowley they never call him hatchet face other than the nickname that right. the the tour guy gives him yeah so this is all but that's all stuff that could have been that, in the first one it all should have been in the first one and it like it you know it's, like like i said earlier it like humanizes him and makes it makes him more we're more empathetic toward towards him and you you feel more for the female character and when it's the laurie strode thing where like if you know michael myers is laurie's um i think they're cousins I think they're cut. God, now I'm forgetting one of the most iconic slasher films of all time. Anyways, you know that Michael Myers is related. Oh, wow. Is related. I, yep. I believe they're cousins. God, I feel like my brain is just farting. Um, it's all that shit. They're related. Anyways, it it ties it ties people it ties them together. Right. Where where and I think that they were doing that homage, but to not tell you till the first. What? Half sister. Stepsister. That's fine. Yeah, get back to me because I I'm forgetting everything right now. Sister, sister. In the, the moment, this is why. Sitcom? This is why I always did Starting bad in the. Uh, Tia and Tamara. Tia, <laughs> Tia and Tamara. I love that. <laughs> um, 
So yeah, I agree, but I think that what this movie really succeeds at is, at least in the first half, being, I was laughing out loud at a lot of stuff. Sure. And I think that the gore especially is, it's like Final Destination gore, where it's funny. It's like, it's gross, but it's so ridiculous that I feel like I'm watching a Mortal Kombat game. Yeah. And I feel like it takes the tropes of 80s slashers and makes them ridiculous. And that's what I really loved about it, because... I felt like I was watching a Jason Voorhees movie where instead of him just coming out and being really subtle and still, every time Victor Crowley appears, he's like, uh, he's like, yeah. he just looks like a, he looks insane. <laughs> he's just insane. And I love the fact that he always jumps up and it's like, Aah! he's it's it's awesome. Yeah, it's yeah. like Goonies or something. It's, it's, it's also like, funny that like so this happened in the beginning more than it happened towards the end, but like when he's killing the old couple, the like yeah. midwestern couple. Everyone just like stands there, stands there well, and no, watches. The one girl, just uh, the lead girl, yeah, she has uh, Mary her gun Beth. Out. Mary Beth just starts. I I learned over the course of the movie, the actress playing Mary Beth cannot control her limbs, because as she's shooting, she just like ah, ah, ah. You know how like Antonio Banderas in Desperado like flings the bullets a yeah. little bit. She just kind of like, and then later on when she's running, watch the. You'll never watch it again, but fans at home, watch the last sequence when she's running through the graveyard. It's literally like. It's like I don't. Maybe she was directed that way to make fun of how, uh, yeah, possibly victims or sure. final girls have run in in movies before. But like her arms just look, they don't connect with the because if you're running, you kind of jo- like it's kind of all one trajectory to where you're going. It's not like you're not like do a you, puppet. Do you want me to take this since I asserted earlier that I love runners? Yeah, please, please, <laughs> yeah, please. <laughs> what's your what's your assertion on this? Yeah, absolutely. You need your arms to propel you when you're right. running. Not, right. Not if you're if they're flailing, then they're slowing you down. And it, it's it, so like, strange. You naturally propel yourself. You wouldn't naturally try and slow yourself down when you're running. So yeah. you have to like think about it yeah. to run that way. I will also say that the beginning um, with Robert England and the brother sets them up as kind of unlikable hillbillies. So when she, when Mary Beth's character comes in and is like, "I gotta avenge my father and brother," I'm like, they seem like kind of shitheads. Yeah, like, no they one. S- they see- I wasn't upset when they died. Yeah, like can we play clip number one? This is uh, they're a big debate for the. <laughs> Can we just pull over so I can finish my damn piss? That's me on every road trip ever. Because yeah. we both have hummingbird bladders. Because yes, we we're real be. life friends and we know this. We know this about um, one another. I can't make it through a two hour movie without peeing at least once. At if least. I'm lucky. If I'm lucky. If I haven't had any beverages all day. I'll be good. Then, then I I made once. it through Mother without peeing once. Is that because your bladder was shocked into... I just... just yeah. <laughs> What's well, going I loved it. I love Mother. It was, it we'll was talk paralyzed. about that. Let's tweet me about Mother if you've seen it, because I fucking loved it. It was the, weird. The movie, not the, your... Not your mother. Not your mother. I mean, not that I don't want to hear about that. But anyways... Uh, <laughs> I want to hear about your mother. That is me every every road trip. Every road trip when we get stuck in traffic, or or back in the day when I would go to a... Uh, when they would take us to an opera in grade school, and, and they'd set me in the middle, and I knew I had oh, an hour and a half yeah. where I couldn't pee, I'd yeah. be like... <laughs> Can we just pull over so I can finish my damn piss? That was me. That was me. I just yeah. pull this pull tour over. bus over. Pull over. Pull over from pull this, this opera. opera over. <laughs> it's a classic Ben Oh, Bang. Pull, man. Pull this opera Let's play over. clip number two because this uh, gets into boobs. Um, this is after you've seen an intro of New Orleans, like I said, where it's all broad daylight, all just nonstop girls flashing, which I, I went to New Orleans for my bachelor party for five days. I don't remember more than like two girls flashing for beads. Which when did, when did we become a society where people thought that showing off their naughty bits was worth beads? Beads. When did when did that become currency? A long time ago, I, I think. I know, but like what? <laughs> I don't think it like ever translated into anything else in the world. I just but wa- there's something specific about Mardi Gras where. I just wonder if beads. like if like the people who have like thirty beads from that. If they've kept them and years later look at it with just like 30 pieces of shame like if i showed my my junk uh-huh. if, i know junk is not not quite as are you talking about trunk junk or are you talking about front junk front junk if i showed front junk yeah. and got beads for it right i know it's, it's a little bit more graphic sure because if it's an r rating and they show wang it, it's for graphic nudity do you know is that it, no the, i didn't know the that. mpa calls it graphic nudity it if is if every judd apatow movie contains graphic nudity because there's man dong well, I'm glad I'm now in retrospect I'm glad that I specified which junk because if it had been trunk junk and someone had thrown beads oh, at you then yeah. it's obviously we know what that's for that's 
<laughs> Anyways, whatever. We All can, right, we'll we can get into on. the bead culture of anyway, it all. Anyway, tweet me about your mother. Um, <laughs> Anyways, can we play clip number two? This is after we've seen way too many boobs, <laughs> and we've already talked so much, we haven't even covered the movie yet. Haven't you seen enough boobs? <laughs> See, as adult Ben, I, I, I'm, I'm like after my um, my year before I got married, I, I, we went to a couple strip clubs in New Orleans. We didn't do anything crazy, but we just like threw ones. I got a couple lap dances. Nothing like, like, whoa, man, I can't tell my wife that. I told her everything. I was like, this is what happened. She's like, okay. And then I had another bachelor party here in L.A., and they, they drove me, even though I was heavily intoxicated, to one. And I pretty much just sat there... Um, I almost passed out in the car, and then I took two five-hour energy drinks. Two of them. I didn't mean to. That's ten hours of I energy. I did. I took them both, and apparently I ran in there, and I was like the maitre d' of dames and games in downtown L.A., <laughs> which is a topless sports bar, and I was like introducing all the dancers and my friends and all the friends to uh, other customers, and they were like, do you work here? And I was like, no, I just had two five-hour energies, and I don't remember any of this. Um, but anyways, by the time all that, and I got married and everything, and when people are like, if I get together with my guy friends, they're like, let's go to a strip club, I'm like, guys, guys. Haven't you seen enough boobs? I'm like, you were all with me. Haven't you seen right. enough boobs? Aren't we, aren't we past that now? So, uh, and they're all like, no, I, because uh, we were being introduced to people and no one ever <laughs> took their clothes off. We were just <laughs> making friendly introductions and no one ever took their clothes yeah, off. Yeah, it's my fault. It's my fault. Come on, so anyways, they, um, we already talked a lot about it actually in the plot and beforehand. Tony Todd is like the world's creepiest tour guide. And can we play his ghost story clip, B1? Because I love this. I had a tour group <laughs> out in the swamp last Halloween. It was the mist of night. Yeah? And there was this chief that looked kind of like you. He got spooked by something in the marsh. He saw two eyes staring at him from the woods. It chilled him to his very marrow. They wanted to get off the boat in a hurry. And he had his foot dangling over it's the so edge. so good. He, he fell in? A gator got him? What happened? He slipped. Hit his head right on the roof. And sued me for negligence. <laughs> that cocksucker. That's it. I like the end. That's yeah. it. It's such a great build because that, that's a moment there where they're taking that horror trope. And they do that a few times. They do that here where you think you're gonna get the legend and then it's a joke. Or with the tour guide that we already played where it's like, you think you're gonna get the legend, he's like, anyway, he died, right. you know? And then right, you finally right. get the legend, or part of it, we find out. Right. We don't get the full legend. We don't get the full thing. But I do agree that they should have done the full legend since they gave us two fake out legends. But I do like that they play with those tropes. And then I like when they first introduced the two Girls Gone Wild girls, what did you think of them? Because it's so absurd that they're like, we're making a movie from the Bayou Beavers director, and then later on you find out he's just like a accountant or a teacher or something, and it's like, uh, was there no research done? What, how does this, nothing they're doing has a story. There's no structure to it. It'd be different if there was like, that's why I think it's so funny, and that's why I think their characters are so ridiculous, because they take these normal like Girls Gone Wild tropes or, or gratuitous nudity and make it clearly like, this is not reality. Sure. Um, yeah, it is a little bit of a house of cards, and like, then I mean, so obviously it's it's a comic ploy, but like in his wallet he has the two business cards, like what? one of each business card, <laughs> as if he had just been handed them. Um, mm -hmm. Like, please hang on to this so you can identify yourself as either one. Yep. Um, but you can't ever hand them to anyone. You yep. just have one of each. Um, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what's the point of him having those? I don't know. Maybe he had given them all out. I, I, yeah, he was Gave very successful his... in both arenas yep. of his life. Yep. Um, so, yeah, it's like, it's a little bit of a an empty construct, but... So, so but you then you can't have it both ways. You can't be making fun of that trope and then also have us care when they die. Yeah. So if, I don't know if the goal was ever to have us care right, about any of them. So that's what I was going to say. I don't think that they oh, care if we cared, but it just it it doesn't it it doesn't then provide a vehicle for the rest of the movie cuz like the It does run out of steam yeah, these two characters yeah, by the like the first half we are we're like with the people and that provides enough juice to like mm -hmm. hold your interest, but the second half when they're just getting picked off, like we know they're going to get picked off and it it doesn't really matter unless you're gonna do something cool with the kills, or unless you're gonna like which they do, a uh, kind of. Oh, see, I love the kills. Which I want to get into each one of them. They don't like kill. They 
it's gratuitous and it's like it's gross, but it's not inventive. Does that uh, make sense? I think they're pretty. I don't inventive. think that he's just ripping things off them. I think the first few are very inventive. When and in fact, let's real quick before we move on to the kills, I want to play since you said uh, in the beginning the girls are really funny. In fact, you pulled a few clips of theirs. Yeah. Um, can we play clip number three? Your syphilis, Miss Big Words. <laughs> <laughs> You That's know what? A, that was my favorite one. It's weird because the Secretary of Health and, and Humanities and all that stuff, mm -hmm. um, the, the health secretary, uh, went up to Trump and said that, you know, there's we should maybe start teaching more about syphilis in schools and things like that. And, and it's, it's an outbreak in certain pockets of society and in certain big cities yeah. with more condensed populations. And she just kept saying the word syphilis, and Trump was getting very frustrated because he didn't know what that meant. No. And so he finally just looked at her and said, You're syphilis, Miss Big Words. And then he, uh, <laughs> you know, he called up Rex Tillerson and said, Did you really call me a moron? And he was like, Yep. Yep. Sure did. Yes, did. <laughs> sure did. It's 100%. You're syphilis. I'll do it to your face. Um, uh, I was, uh, I was so in a good. play um, in middle school for mm -hmm. health class where we basically had oh, to yeah. like... Oh, yeah. I remember that. Yeah, where we had to sort of act out. Because we're real life friends. That's exactly right. <laughs> Us and uh, my childhood friend, Corey, we all, <laughs> the three of us hang out. He's my childhood friend! Well, you know what? Well, too bad. Now it's both of ours. Finders arts. keepers, <laughs> bruh. Bruh. Um, <laughs> anyways, uh, so we were doing this play, and uh, we were basically like representing the dangers of sexual uh, activity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and one girl was gonorrhea and she was like i don't want to be gonorrhea um because i have i have explicit reasons not to and i can list them for you right now and she like went through like she basically had a diatribe and yeah. she was just like here's all the reasons yeah. and then uh and then our teacher just looked at her and she was like fine you're syphilis miss big words there's a lot of big words. There was, I there remember were a that. lot. Yeah. She went off on a tangent. So, anyways, uh, we get to this new tour bus. Why didn't I write down his name? Damn it! What's the tour guide? What's the tour guide's name? It's gonna drive me crazy. Cliff. Cliff. Sure, we'll call him Cliff. Um, anyways, so they, they go there. They all get they go, all get on the bus. We've already talked about all the characters that get introduced. I love the happy like weird Disney music as they're going off yeah. to the swamp. It's super happy. Uh, Jim and Shannon are very uh, naive and adorable Midwest. There's Jack Cracker when he's like, oh, that's just Jack Cracker over there. He's just trying to scare you. This guy in a fishing boat going, don't, Victor Crowley lives there. And in fact, can we play clip number B3? Because he warns them, but they don't listen. Y'all gonna die. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, I think, um, you know, I don't want to do another Trump joke. It's fine. I'll just move on. Do you okay. have anything for y'all gonna die? Um... <laughs> I was going to say, after he tweeted, after he keeps tweeting with North Korea, yeah. everybody's just thinking, y'all going to die. Just, let's not do nuclear let's, war. Let's, let's not try do and that. avoid that. I think it's just a battle let's of try and words. Avoid. Sexual predation and nuclear war. Yeah, yeah, Those yeah. are two things yeah. we would like to get through every day without. Mm -hmm. Please. Um, I think that'd be great if we could do that. My favorite part about him in the boat was that he was in a boat. He wasn't on the shore like trying to wave them down. He was in a boat and easily could have paddled over to them and been like guys stop yeah. i'm super lazy yeah he, i want to warn you that you're all gonna die but i'm fucking lazy he's got an oar laying across his waist maybe he had like a he had staked out the perfect place to gator hunt or fish and he was just like ah, sorry guys this is maybe if i move i'll scare the no because he's yelling he's yelling he's yelling There's and no. he's also like if it's a dangerous swamp don't be in the boat man <laughs> Like, where's your home? Well, they do reveal that he lives on the outskirts and Victor Crowley's never messed with him in the second one. But again, reveal that in the first. One. Reveal yeah, it in the first. But yeah. also, like, you know, or just have him, like, not get there in time. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why he wasn't mobile in that just moment. Yelling. He was just, like, yelling. Just yelling. So we get on the boat. Marcus is not having fun. He'd rather be back with the boobs and booze of Bourbon Street, which, by the way, we didn't even mention that there's vomiting in here that you hated. Oh, my God. But I will say that when I got to Bourbon Street... The first day I arrived with all my all my buddies that were there for the bachelor party, the set I swear it was like it was like it was timed out. When I when we walked onto Bourbon Street, I was like, guys, this is Bourbon Street because I'd been there before. And all of a sudden, this dude walked by and barfed right in front of us, That's and we were perfect. like, we were like, 
Okay. That guy. Welcome. That guy works for Bourbon Street. I swear, Street. he. I'm not making that up. He. Someone barfed as soon as I was like, "Hey guys!" And somebody was like, Bleh! in the trash can right next to us. Anyways, I knew as soon as it happened, I was like, "Jesse's gonna hate this." But can we play clip number four? This is when Marcus is not happy about being on this boat. Man, give it a break. This is fun. Not as fun as a bag of dicks. I mean, it depends on who you are. Maybe some people like a bag of dicks. I. I mean. Some it's a delicacy in some countries. I was gonna say some people might like a bunch of dicks, <laughs> but if they're in a bag, it's weird. Like, something it's the went Louis C.K. joke. Yeah. Where, where do you get these disconnected bags of dicks? Yeah, uh, is it just like a Lorena Bobbitt factor? What's happening here? Uh, so then he Ben goes on his rant about his ex, and I think that they're trying to make you somewhat sympathize with him. But I find Ben just kind of whiny, sure, because I'm like I don't give a fuck, and you just there's this super beautiful girl who's clearly going through her own shit and you're just unloading on her fuck off that's why i like marcus the most and the tour guide who i can't remember his goddamn name yeah but like so if someone. you're gonna if you're gonna do the thing what's, what's that? that no the tour guide reverend zombie is tony todd's character um so while, while you look it up if you're gonna do the thing where look. um where the guy is upset about the ex-girlfriend like for again for us to care about yep. that we need to have met the ex-girlfriend. Yeah, otherwise it's you just can't out of just out of talk mind. about it. Yeah, because yeah. it doesn't. It has no impact if we meet him post her. So yeah. like, you know, she needs to be in that group of friends, and they need to be trying to make it work. Also, why not? Like we said, why not make Robert England likable and his son a dickhead, so that at least we can be like, Mary Beth, your dad seemed cool. Yeah. Otherwise, it's like it seemed like both of them are okay if they left. Yeah, they're probably. I don't, I don't, but I don't. so uh, we we talked about the Detroit thing already. Uh, can we play clip number B4? This is when they first, so they crash. We already talked about how they crash and they end up on the shore. Let's get into the fun gore stuff because that'll take us the last 11 minutes of our show. Uh, clip B4 is when they first hear Victor Crowley. Did you? And here's the thing. I know that's scary, but I have a real life uh, clip from this is my wife when I was working last week. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I do actually work sometimes to <laughs> get paid for things. He was working on the railroad. <laughs> yeah. It's, so my, he does manual labor. My it's daughter, weird. my daughter Daisy, she has started to do like weird voices, this kind of growly thing. And I'm just going to play the audio for you on this. Cause Wait, can, this we, can we also just say, like, just so everyone knows, this is unedited. This is unedited. This is a real audio recording. Of my 10-month-old child uh, yeah. playing in her playpen area. with the, my, Mind you, my wife is filming from the back of her head, so it's even creepier. Yep, your 10-month-old daughter. Daughter, yes. Ready? That's my daughter. What the <laughs> fuck? Just wait. Hear that again. Just this section again. It sounds like a gremlin. <laughs> I have listened to that so many times. It's terrifying. What? I honestly the was fuck? like, honey, we should have saved our place. We're fucked. Oh my god. <laughs> the house isn't haunted. Your child is. If we never Dada. see Ben again, you know, you'll my, know what happened. My daughter murdered me in my sleep. Well, not your daughter, but the the, the, the demon, ghost who has inhabited your daughter. <laughs> so now that we have like ten minutes left, and let us know if we have any more time in there. But uh, whatever. Uh, let's go over some of the kills because that's the most fun stuff. So basically. Victor Crowley shows up, starts murdering people. There's not a lot more plot. It's just people getting kicked off. So dying. let's go into the kills, because that's what everybody wants to hear about. If you haven't seen it, you should, because the kills are ridiculous. The first two, the first few are my favorite. When Jim, the old guy, gets killed, uh, he gets... Which one was no, he? No, he gets hatcheted. He gets he's hatcheted. He's the one that he gets, gets hatcheted. hatcheted until he's... He, what's that? Perfect. Oh, Thank you. He gets hatcheted down the middle until he's broken off and just thrown aside. But his wife gets uh, pulled her face. It's weird because they do it in one seemingly one take where it speeds up and goes around. And he rips her face from top to bottom at the, at the jaw. And then it's just this giant Gene Simmons tongue flopping around as blood just sprays everywhere. And mind you, every time he kills someone, there's some weird shot of something around, like a tree or a gravestone, just where somebody just throws buckets of blood yeah. on it. And I love it. I fucking love it because yeah. it's so over the top. And it's clearly making fun of, but also paying homage to the gory kills of the, the day. 
um what's the next one then the next one is doug shapiro i think is he's the next one that goes um oh yeah that's a good one so he's the one who when they see they don't see doug die but he gets his head twisted until it completely pops off Mm -hmm. which actually is similar to a kill um that we did in funhouse massacre if you guys haven't seen it watch it because it's a halloween movie and let me know what you think but Rocco, our killer wrestler clown guy, who's kind of like Doink the Clown meets Jason Voorhees, um, he grabs a kid's head and pulls it until it pops off. And then he looks at it and just goes, Meh. And it's just this awesome moment where the actor, um, Mars Crane, just looks at the head like, mm, that wasn't that impressive. And it's such a fun little thing that he does. And I know I just shamelessly promoted my own film. But, um, that was a little director's commentary for you. But there I know you go. You didn't direct it. But. And actually, that, the, guy who, the kid who plays the, the one who gets his head ripped off is Robert, um, is, is, uh, Robert Kurtzman's actual son who did the makeup. Who is now headless. Who is now headless, That's, yes. You guys that didn't realize real. that. Everything that was real. in Funhouse Massacre Everything in Funhouse real. Massacre is real. I am really a deputy in uh, Macon County, which is a made-up place. <laughs> There is a ma- Macon County, but not in Statesville, where we combine several Midwest South places. Hey, you don't want to offend anyone. No, it's just everywhere. All inclusive. It's everywhere, America. People die everywhere. So he gets his head ripped, like twisted off and popped off. Um, God, I'm trying to remember the next one. Oh, well, while we're here, we might as well, we played the Detroit clip. Misty and Jenna start really, their friendship de- just devolves even more. Can we play clip sure. number six? Because they get really mad. Okay. For your information, I am from the valley, not the city. You know, um, if you live in California, no one brags about being from the valley. All of us are like, ah, shit, we just couldn't afford the west side. You know, we yeah. just, I live, in, I live in the valley, and I'm like, well, I just couldn't, I couldn't afford the it's expensive. It's expensive. So in the city is expensive. Nobody's like, I live in the valley, motherfucker. You're like, yeah, yeah, I live in the valley. It's all right. You know, there's a, there's an IKEA. This uh, every conversation <laughs> goes like this. Oh, you live in the valley? It's hot in the valley. Yeah, it's real yeah, hot. It's real yeah, hot. it's real hot. But yeah. you know, it's better. It's uh, it rent's gets, cheaper. <laughs> that's literally that's every, every con- conversation so that you LA. have with a stranger. So in Los LA. Angeles. Can we play clip number seven, which is when they? This is just we're just gonna go um, down the list of these three clips from uh, Misty and Jenna because we gotta see their friendship er- uh, corrode. That's what's yeah. happening. Erode. I bet this means Shapiro was here. <laughs> what a genius! You do know the vibrator goes in your cooch and not your ear, right? Hey, why don't you suck your dad off again, bitch? I will right after you're done. Fine, good. So there's a lot that just happened there. Lot. I feel like we just move on from that one because sure. there's a lot of uh, graphic imagery there, and they're clearly not liking each other. And they're we've... also they're slandering that poor girl's father. I, I don't know. think she probably ever well, serviced him. I don't think that they have a good relationship with their father if they're in a video where every time he hits record, they just go, woo! And at one point, she's even like, Misty, your woo wasn't in the moment. And I love it, because they're making fun of, like, it's like our sketch. Yeah. If you haven't seen this, <laughs> Jesse and I did a sketch years ago. I'm just going to shamelessly promote the shit out of stuff yes. we've done. you got to look up porn voiceover artist. It's Jesse and I are in it. I play a very um, overly, uh, God, just a guy who takes, he does ADR on porn, and he takes it as seriously as somebody who went to Yale drama would take a scene from Shakespeare. And Jesse plays the super unenthused engineer, and it's super funny. I'm not just saying that. It is. Check it out. Um, It's ridiculous. But it reminds me of that, where it's like they take this so seriously. They think they're going to get like an, an acting career from... No story, nothing. Just showing up just, in woo, random places, yeah. flashing their boobs. Um, doesn't make any sense. No but one that's ever part asked of for the... their lines. <laughs> Not... Can what's, we... what's and my motivation? Let's here? play clip number eight, because this is when we start to realize maybe Jenna didn't go to NYU like she claimed. Ooh. Or I didn't really go to NYU. No, shit. <laughs> it was my first choice, but I didn't get it. It's everyone's first choice. <laughs> so I went to Hofstra. <laughs> I actually think the actress that plays Jenna is really funny. I think yeah. she has some good moments. So I think that, that I think was... that Misty is good at what she does too. I just think they give them they they just eventually because they start at like a twelve, they don't have anywhere to go. Right, and so this is this is a problem where like in improv class they tell you not to play stupid because if you if you set a barometer of like I don't understand what nine one one is, yeah. then you're not able to help any. You cannot solve any problems, yeah. and you can't. You can't intelligently contribute to anything. No. So like she, she was so stupid. But Jenna is that the one who claimed to be from NYU? Yeah. She at least like had 
a little bit to bring to the table. Like yeah. she lied and she was obviously not in a good place in her life. Yeah. But like she was actually able to contribute to the goings on of the group. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I guess it's okay to have one person who's completely useless. Sure. But kill her off a little sooner. A little, like, she sticks almost right around. Away. She almost sticks right around away. for a very long time. Yeah. Uh, the tour guide. Did we find out who the tour guide is? This is driving me insane. It's driving me completely. Is it Harry Knowles? Is it Harry Knowles? Yes, it is. Um, anyways, he comes back as a twin brother in the sequel. But anyways, um, he's the next one to go. There, there's this whole long sequence where they think there's a person who's hurt in a bush when it clearly is an animal. That's, that was a, that scene drove me insane. That was a tough one for me because it's clearly an animal, and they're like, maybe it's some. We need to save this person when there's a killer on the loose. Just fucking run from whatever sound you hear. Yeah, or get also out of there. like if it's a human, they will audibly respond to you. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to yeah. like go peeking in if it's a real. But again, human maybe being. that's the goal with Adam Green was making fun of that, like making fun of stupid choices people do. Where it's like, I think someone's in there. But then the funny thing is, it ends up just being a raccoon, and then Victor Crowley shows up. Yeah. Shovel just—it's the sharpest shovel in the world because I know the point's sharp on a shovel, but the side usually isn't like razor sharp, and it just lops off tour guys one fell leg. swoop one fell so swoop. his hatchet it took him a while to get through the arm yeah yeah but the shovel just Shoot. one swipe and then he sticks it to his head and, and right before he's like no 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 and he shoves his foot down and the head just pops off and, and blood sprays everywhere and it's completely ridiculous yes. and awesome because yes. that's the thing with this we were going to do a saw movie uh because jigsaw's yes. coming out but i was like it's harder to talk about and laugh about a saw movie because their kills are so brutal it's not that those movies don't have a place in the horror genre but it's really hard to be like ah, and then he's like he falls into like a, a pit of syringes isn't that crazy you're like oh fuck he fell into a pit of syringes and sure it's it's not funny but i would i would argue that the saw kills like a lot of time and energy goes into oh, conceiving yeah. of the oh, saw yeah kills. they're super elaborate and they're so elaborate's the perfect word and they're so like it my criticism for this was they i didn't feel like the kills were inventive but they start, those kills they are start inventive. off cool and then eventually like it's like all right you're just ripping another limb sure. off like and then when they yeah. just kill people off screen like when misty dies it's just her head gets lobbed in and hits joel david moore on the head ben and he's like oh and then her, her upper torso with right. no arm it's like how is he doing all this it's incredible um they, yeah it just looks like they started to find oh here here i'm gonna find his name Yes, Sean. That's Sean. why it was such an easy name. Sean. I was close. Perry was Shen plays him, and I think he's funny as shit. I love his character, so I was bummed when they killed him before Misty. Um, he was. I, I would have loved to see guy. him change accents two more times. I know it would have been like a little bit overdone, so good. but it was such a good. It was, it was such, such a fun a, yeah. turn every time it happened. I just wish we would. I would. I wish he stayed till the end. Yeah. He was my favorite character. I could have had Ben Lee. I think that would have been cool to kill Ben earlier on and flip that trope and, and kill the nice guy. Yeah. And in fact, ugh, never mind. I'm not going to keep pimping out Funhouse. Just watch Funhouse Massacre and tell me what you think about the order in which we kill people. Uh, clip number nine. Can we play that? He is trapped in the night that he was killed. This is where we learn a little more. And he is scared. He's going to mutilate anyone that comes near him. What if he's human? What if he never really died? The thing was never human. Okay. Okay. So she seems to know a lot about him and yep. his motivations, which is puzzling. Yeah. To me, it's, how how could you know the motivations of a monster? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I don't. And and we get, we learn that he's kind of like a he's a restless spirit. He's trapped in this night. I did forget the coolest kill. This is actually my favorite kill in the whole movie when he randomly has a belt sander, <laughs> and he takes it to uh, Jenna's face uh -huh. and. Belt sands her her lower jaw off until it's just a tongue. That one's cool. Lip and yeah, then, that and one's she's, cool. And she's just like wandering around without half a face. And then like that's enough to kill somebody. Right. But nope, he has to after he's chopped off Sean's head with the shovel and it's still in the ground. He has to impale her and then pull her all the way down onto the shovel, which I know isn't sharp. <laughs> I know. The blade, the, maybe. But maybe. The, the, the blunt end of the... the come on. Come on. So then uh, we get to the point where... I think we're done with all the sound clips, actually. Yeah! So now we're at the end. Uh, oh, oh, they run through a graveyard because they're trying to find the city. They're trying to find their way out from the swamp. Um, and they get in there, and this is when Marcus bites it. He gets both arms ripped off, and that's enough to kill somebody. Yeah. But instead, they drag him and smash his head against the gravestone and kill him that way we forgot to mention also the brother in the beginning 
is screaming while his lower torso is being ripped off. He's screaming, it hurts. And he's yeah. still screaming as his lower torso is pulled away. Sure. <laughs> it's incredible. Sure. So you know what you're getting into first minute. I know we got a minute and a half left. Anyways, they get on the boat, uh, and it has a very Friday the 13th ending, where in that one, Jason, young Jason, comes up and grabs him. In this one, Joel David Moore, uh, she falls in. He drags her down, and she's swimming back up, and she... What happens? You tell him, because I feel like I'm rambling with the arm. How she... Uh, he offers the arm out. Yeah, he offers the arm out. <laughs> You're like, what the I, fuck? Why I, didn't you just finish it? <laughs> I just and, feel like I've been rambling a and lot. Then, and then he like pops out of the water. And yeah. he's like about well, to he, attack. Uh, yeah, yeah, and he offers the arm because, and he's ripped off Joel David Moore's arm. And right. he's just laying there right, like, right, right. Eh. and then he's about to kill her. And then we cut to credits. And then we cut to credits. Yep. Which is always, it's a trope in horror movies that drives me, uh, which... We did in ours, too, actually. <laughs> but there's I mean, an end credits tag to ours. So there you go. There's an end credits tag. Anyways, that's Hatchet. We've been talking about Hatchet. Adam Green's slasher film. If you if you saw it, let us know what you think. Have you seen all three? What's your favorite? Uh, what's your favorite kill in this movie? Because they're ridiculous. And um, until next time, Jesse, where can they find you? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram, at Too Much Jesse, or for Sketch, at The Prom Losers. Yeah, and you can find me at The Ben Begley. You can find us at, at Guilty Movie Guys. I think we're going to do Halloween 3 maybe in a couple weeks towards the end. I'm trying to I'm trying to push that one. So right. if you'd like to see Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, which is the batshit crazy one of the whole series, let us know, because it only takes two votes. And until next time, what is your Guilty Movie Pleasure? From producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire Popcorn Talk Network, we would like to thank you for tuning in. For questions or comments, be sure to visit popcorntalk.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of the Popcorn Talk Network. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of the Popcorn Talk Network or its owners or principals. <laughs>